right, well, it's now my pleasure to welcome our first speaker for this conference, and uh, what an amazing uh, person that we have for you. His name is Justin Herald. I'm guessing most of you would, had, would have heard the, uh, the story and, uh, and how he built an incredible business, starting at the age of 25 with just $50, and he turned that into a company that produced over $20 million in turnover. It was called uh, Attitude, and uh, he licensed that internationally and achieved massive uh, success. Um, he also, in 2005, can you believe this, won the International Entrepreneur of the Year Award. The International Entrepreneur of the Year Award, which is obviously a major deal. Some of you might want to put that on your dreams list. And um, he also uh, has uh, written for a number of different business publications and has uh, a readership of over 5.5 million people that uh, absorb his messages uh, throughout Australia and around the world, uh, having achieved the success and reputation that he has. Um, on his website, justinherald.com, he now gets over 30,000 hits per day. He's the author of uh, eight best-selling books, and he personally mentors over 100 business owners each each year and he's regarded as one of Australia's most sought after speakers, does engagements all across the country, works with major brands like, uh, like McDonald's and many, many others and speaks to over 150,000 people every single year. So a huge um, um, you know, background and, uh, and success and achievement. So we're lucky to have him here for the next three days. We're doing uh, two sessions for us and this is gonna be the first. Let's give him a huge blueprint welcome. Let's put our hands together for Justin Herald, everybody. Thank you. I always find it funny when people stand a standing ovation before a speaker starts, because I could suck. <laughs> but I already feel unreal because he stood up. Um, look, I... Um, anyone, ever, anyone ever seen the Muppets? Remember the two old farts that sat up the top that didn't like anyone? Probably somewhere like this. Um, well, every time I speak, there's always two old fart Muppets in the audience, probably not here, but they just don't like me. Um, just so you know, I don't care. Um, but in case you are one of those Muppets and you're thinking to yourself, well, what's your business credentials? Why are you on stage and not me? Hear it all the time. I'll give you my business credentials right from the start so we can start from that perspective. Is that okay? I've never done a profit and loss, never done a forecast, never done a budget, never borrowed money, and the only thing I passed in school was recess. So that's my business credentials, <laughs> right? But what I did do, and it's nice to be around people who... Uh, <laughs> did you notice that you, this boat's swaying? <laughs> I didn't notice it until I stood up. <laughs> um, it's nice to be around people who are like-minded. So what I'm going to do today is come from my perspective on how I did what I did. There's a lot of uh, walk-away um, information and take-home information on how you can apply this to your business. The way that I work, not only from a speaking perspective but also with my clients, is I, and I'm going to teach you on how to grow a business without spending any money. Um, I'm a big fan, I'm in business, and the businesses are the things that I do to get the stuff that I want. So the stuff that I want is the mo most important thing. The, that just means I need to do my business well to get the stuff that I want. I'm going through a Harley phase at this point in time of my life. I'm trying out this um, midlife crisis before I get there to see if it's going to be any good, and then I'll really hit it with a big crack. So I'm going to tell you the attitude story. Now, there's so many reasons why people decide to go in business. There's no right or wrong reason. Your reason's your reason, right? Some people go into business because they want a better lifestyle. Some people go into the business, which I don't understand this one, they want to be the master of their own destiny, whatever that is. I sat next to a numb nut on a plane recently. I hate sitting next to people on planes for one reason. If they're stupid, you're stuck with them, right? I'm not sure if anyone else has ever gone through this. So I sat down and I was on the front cover of the Voyeur magazine at this particular time. I was doing a corporate job recently and a lady thought that the Voyeur magazine was a magazine about people who look through people's windows. <laughs> I'm in that one too. But, but anyway, the Virgin magazine. So I sit down and the guy sits next to me and goes, I know who you are. Well, I said, well, that's good to know. And he said, I'm a businessman too. And I said, well, that's fantastic. He said, why did you start your business? And he said, I just wanted some spare time. I'm thinking, you're an idiot. We didn't talk much after that. But anyway, your reason for, for being in business is entirely your reason. Never let anyone say, well, that's pretty stupid for doing that. It, it, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of oxygen thieves out there. I'm not sure if anyone's ever come across them. People have got this great opinion, um, but they suck in their own life. So 
Uh, whatever you want to do, just do it with your best. For me, business was a thing that I didn't think that I was in, and I'm going to prove that and show you. When you start a business, well, why you start a business is entirely up to you. For me, and I know this is going to shock a lot of people, well, actually, no, it probably won't, but my father is a minister, which I know you're thinking that because I look so angelic. But my dad, when I was younger, uh, was the head of the whole religion when I was growing up, which I've got no dramas with being uh, in that whole thing. But the problem with being a minister's kid is there's always someone in the church that tells you how to live your life. And I've got that rare disease where I speak before I think. So when I was younger, people would say to me, Justin, you've got this problem in your life. And I'd go, well, you really suck in your own life. I'm not sure why you're telling me what to do, which apparently you shouldn't say that to minister's wives, I've learned. But anyway, I was 1995, I was 25 years old. A lady came up to me and said, Justin, you've got an attitude problem. I said, no, I don't. She said, you answer everyone back. I said, well, no, I don't. <laughs> and she said, until you stop doing that, you're going to end up in a scrap heap of life. The only reason I decided to start a business was wholly and solely, purely to upset this lady in my dad's church. <laughs> that was my business plan. No more, no less. I didn't know. I'm not sure if anyone else in this room has also fallen into business where you decided to start something just because you just thought, no, oh, that'd be a good idea. And then it turns into something, so, which I, I actually quite like. So as we know, when you start a business, you've got to do research. So I went and did my financial research, which I went to the local ATM machine. I put my key card in it. And at age 25, I had $1.25 in the bank. So you can't upset someone with $1.25. So I rang up my little brother, Dean, and said, Dean, I need to borrow some money. He said, why? I said, because I want to piss off so-and-so in Dad's church. He goes, all right, here's 50 bucks. <laughs> so with that, I was filthy rich. Then I went and did my market research. Now, my market research was pretty serious because I had a Mini back in those days, but I had no fuel in the Mini, and I didn't want to use my working capital for fuel, so my parents gave me five bucks. Now, if you've ever owned a Mini, five dollars gets you a very long way, right? So my research was how far would that get me, and how big is this five dollar fuel circumference, and how many printers are going to be in that? There was one. So I rang up Marty. Marty's one of my best mates. We used to do nothing together and we're really good at it. I said, I'm going to start a business today. And he said, you know how? He said, nah. He said, can I come along and watch then? I said, come along and watch. So we went out. So I walked into this printer and I said, g'day, mate. I'm chosen you out of every single person in the yellow pages. Which wasn't a lie. I just couldn't afford to go to anyone else. And he said, that's fantastic. And I said, I'm thinking the same thing. And he asked me a question I wasn't expecting. He said, well, how much money do you have? I said, well, I've got 50 bucks. He said, well, you need $680 for the setup just to start. And I said, well, if I had $680, I just would have said to you, mate, I have $680. But as I just said to you, mate, I have $50, can we just have the $50 conversation, not the $680 conversation? <laughs> and he said, but I can't do it. And I said, but you're missing the opportunity. And he said, what opportunity? I said, to make 50 bucks. It's a pretty simple conversation at this point in time. In the end, he said, I'll do it, but never tell anyone. And I remember saying to him back then, who is ever going to listen to me speak anyway? <laughs> so we just won't tell him. Attitude started off as a slogan T-shirt brand. Slogans such as, it's all about luck, just ask any loser. Um, I don't have an attitude problem, you have a perception problem. Uh, my personal favourite, sarcasm is just another service I provide. <laughs> so I sold three of those shirts to three of my mates. One of them was my brother, and Dean said, I just gave you 50 bucks, why do I have to pay you 20 for a shirt? I said, because I'm a businessman, Dean, this is how it works. So I got four shirts made up. We all went to church the following Sunday, we all walked in at the same time, we all had the same T-shirt on, and we all sat on the front row, and this lady walked in, and she was ticked. It's the best 50 bucks I've ever spent in my entire life, right? <laughs> now, I wasn't expecting much from that. You know the one thing, I'm a little bit different, I'm not saying the opposite is wrong, but I think sometimes... People aim too far out um, when it comes to goal setting, right? I just rather, I don't, I've never done a five-year goal, two-year goal, one-year goal. No, I just have a one-day goal and that's a, a results. I want results. So if I do a results every day, there's 365 days worth of results. Because my focus is on the stuff or the stuff outside of my business, that's my focus. What I do inside my business just gets me, do we following where I'm going here? It's, that's the way my head works, because I just, you know, if I had to write something down, I'd lose the piece of paper anyway. So anyway, I wasn't really expecting anything from that. I just wanted to upset the lady and come up with another idea the following Sunday to upset her even more. But on that day, people come up and said two things I wasn't expecting. Number one, really like your T-shirt. I said, oh, thank you. Number two, can I buy one? I hadn't thought that far ahead. I said, I suppose you can. And the only time I'll talk about the figures and how the business went is now, just to show you where we went, and we'll get back to here. 
I'm a very big believer in growing a business organically. There's a natural progression to every business. It can naturally go well, or it can naturally go not well. We've got to figure out what that natural thing is before we can go and work on it, if that makes sense. I think too many people put their hands on things before they know where it's going to go. So I sold my three, sh I made three shirts, or sold three shirts to my mates. Those I could sell, and because I'm very big on every time you sell one thing, you've got at least to be able to make two more. So I sold what, those three shirts. Could, then I could go and make six shirts. Make, sold those six, could make 12, 24, 48, 96, need a calculator after that. But that's the way that the business grew. My first year's turnover, fifty dollar startup. The first year was nine hundred eighty thousand dollars. Second year, two and a half million, five and a half million, twelve and a half million, twenty-two and a half million. The last year, of the business was thirty-seven and a half mil. So, it sort of went okay. The good thing, though, about thirty-seven million dollars, besides the cars, oh, I love cars. But besides the cars, and most girls, say, women say to me, I don't get the car thing, I don't get the shoe thing. <laughs> but so, besides the cars, right? It became an international brand. So now. Wherever that lady goes on holidays throughout the world, <laughs> I'm pissing her off globally now. It's fantastic. <laughs> world domination. So, anyway, I'll get back to this day. So I started, because I didn't know what I was doing. And there might be some people, maybe not. There might be some people in this room who go, I think I'm doing it the right way. I don't know if I'm doing it the right way. Suck and see. I, I, I think that's the way the business goes. But I started to sell to my friends and friends of my friends and mates of friends of my mates and my friends and my friends and my mates and my friends and friends of friends. And then after a while, I ran out of people that liked me. So I thought, well, I can't really sell to the people that don't. Um, and then I had a brilliant idea, because I'm an ideas man. I thought, hang on, there's shops out there that sell clothing. And I have clothing. I need to go and see these people. So I did. And this is the conversation I had with the first shop that I ever went to. It was in Sydney. I walked in. I said to the guy, g'day, I'm from Attitude. He goes, I've never heard of it. I said, well, you wouldn't have, because I haven't told you about it yet. He goes, well, no one's asking for it. I said, why would they ask for something they haven't heard of? And if now they had heard of it, you still haven't heard of it. So if they ask you about it, you haven't heard of it, what they're talking about. So I better tell you, unless you've heard of it. And he goes, well, there's no demand. I said, there's no demand because no one's freaking asking for it, mate. No one's asking for it because you're not even going to let me tell you about it. So how about I tell you about it? And you're going to go, oh, yeah, that might be a bad idea. Let me go put a little bit up the back. Right where no one can find it, but I'm going to put it in my shop. And then one day someone's going to come into your store and say, excuse me, do you have anything you I've never heard of before? And you're going to go, Oh, yes, right at the back of my store. You're going to go and show those people. And they're going to go, I love that. Can I buy one? And you, as the business owner, are going to go, cha-ching, yes, you can. They're going to wear it to their mate's barbecue probably two weeks later. And the mates are going to go, love that shirt. Where would you get that one from? And they're going to say, from your shirt store. So probably another two weeks after that, they're going to come into your store and say, my mate bought a shirt from you a couple of weeks ago. Can I buy the same sort of one? Which is what we call demand. But we can't get to demand because you're an idiot. You won't let me tell you about it. You know what he said to me? When there's a demand, come back and see me. Has anyone ever met a stupid person? You might have customers or clients like that, right? Now, it's illegal to hit them now. We're not allowed to hit them anymore. But this next thing is the number one thing that people email me and go, you know what? That really works. So, the next time you're in front of a numb nut person that's just doing your head in, in your head, give them a mental head bump. It's going to make you feel so much better. You can virtually break their nose and they have no idea. You walk away all happy. So I left that store all dejected, right? I was doing, remember Muttley? Doing that. <laughs> having this whole pity party. I know none of you have. I rock at pity parties. I love having, I still do it to this day. Anyway, I get back to my car. And I had an epiphany. Now, I don't know how to spell it, but I do know I had one. Up until that point, I was listening to every single person around me tell me what I should be doing in my business. Anyone have people like that around you? Don't they suck? So anyway, which are all my friends. And I figured out at that minute, they're all on the dull. They don't know what they're talking about. So I decided from that day and that day on, and I've never gone away from this. Nothing that I'm going to say today is, as Oprah says, is going to be an aha moment. Everything I believe when it comes to success is common sense. The problem is I think a lot of us try to, we, we tend to overcomplicate it because we think it's supposed to be hard. I don't think it is hard. But I decided from that day that I'm going to run my business one way and one way only. Never gone away from this. And that was wholly and solely through my personality. Now, if you don't have a personality, we are selling them at the back of the room on the way out. <laughs> Two for the price of one today. Cruise special. So, because what makes you you is what's going to attract people to you. What you sell is secondary. You could be the best person under the sun, 
people will be attracted to that, they'll believe you a lot more. You can have the best product under the sun and be a narky person, you're not going to last very long. So people are attracted to people. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to be me. And the me that I am, I'm, this, is, this is the thing that shocks most people. I am not a serious person. I know. Shocked. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to have fun doing this whole business thing. Because if it works, I've had fun. If it doesn't work, I've had fun. I'm all about having fun. So I thought, all right. Ring up four of my mates when I'm sitting in the car park of this customer uh, of this surf store. I said, I need you guys to come over tonight. And I said, why? I'm sitting having a board meeting because I'm a businessman. They come over that night, they said, what's up? I said, one of you to ring this surf store once a week and this is all I want you to say. Week one, ring, ring. Hello, do you have any attitude gear? No, we don't. Week two, hello, do you have any attitude gear? No, not yet. Hello. Week three, hello, do you have any attitude gear? No, but a few people have been asking for that brand. Really? Week four, do you have any attitude gear? And the guy goes, no, we're waiting for the rep to come back in because there's such a demand for his brand. <laughs> no demand, just me and my four mates ringing up the same guy. Really? <laughs> you know what? If you want to sell to someone... The best thing to do is not talk. What they say will tell you how to sell to them. Because I didn't hear this guy say, I don't like it. I heard him say, no one's asking for it. So I thought, I'll just get people to ask for it then. To me, that's common sense. So the following week, I went in to this store. Now, I didn't know, but two brothers owned the surf store. So luckily for me, the second brother was there this time. So I walked in, had all my stuff in my bag and everything. Put it down. I said, "Get out! I'm from this brand you probably never heard of." And he goes, "What's it called?" So, attitude. He goes, "Stop." He goes, "Everyone is asking for your brand right now." <laughs> Just me and my four mates. <laughs> Put an order in. It was uh, fifteen hundred and eighty-seven dollars. It was time for financial retirement back in that, that, those days for me. <laughs> Sold out though in two weeks. <laughs>